All right, so I revised the description of the problem here to just be a little bit more clear and explicit about what is wanted. And uh, here's the solution. Kapang. All right, so you can just pause. If you're watching this online, pause it and kind of check it out. But uh, basically, right here we're taking in an int. So down here we call it, taking in an int. And then we're going to return an int and a bool. So we're going to receive, after this is run, we're going to do multiple assignment to these two variables. That will be the int, and that will be the bool. And then here we're returning this first one's an int, n divided by 2. So if it was 4, it would be 4 divided by 2, and it would return 2. If it was 5, it would be 2.5 divided by 2. And then it, since it's an int, it would make that 2 and return 2. And then we have here uh, n, and it's not modulus, it's just remainder. That's what they call it in Go. That's the Go terminology is its remainder. You don't call it modulus in Go. So the remainder of n divided by 2, if it's 4, that will be 0. And so it's even. And if it was 5, it would be 1. And 1 is not equal to 0, so that would be false if it was odd. So that's the solution. <clears throat> Write a function with one variadic parameter that finds the greatest number in a list of numbers. That sounds like a pretty good one. You guys could try that one out at home. And there's the solution to it. <laughs> So that's what that would look like. You guys want to study that for a minute or keep rolling? Study it, raise your hand. All right, cool. Who wants to talk through it? Just like, let's hear it. How would you read this? Go for it. Try, though. Like, where, where do you start? When you start trying to understand this code, where's, what do you start looking at first? Okay. Because that whole loop is a bit confusing. Yeah, it takes a while to get accustomed to that. I'm going to pass the baton. Sure. All right, who, who wants to pick up the baton for describing this chunk of code? Okay, so Daniel, let's hear it. So the for loop right there is going through like all the numbers that we encounter, and then checking if the value for whatever number the pawn is greater than whatever the largest was set to. So initially it's zero, and it's going to set largest to whatever that value is, and it's going to keep on going through the bunch of the numbers. And if that value is larger than largest, then it's going to update larger. And then at the end, it's going to return larger. Yeah, perfect. So whenever I start trying to understand code, I often will start, like, where does the computer start? And the computer starts here right at func main. That's where the entry point is to the code. And so the first thing it does is it runs the max function. OK, now I'm back up here with you. <laughs> and max is going to pass in this list of ints. And so a variadic uh, parameter here, the dot, dot, dot notation, meaning I could take in multiple unlimited number of ints, or none, or no ints. I could take in no ints. And then the first line here, var largest int, declares a variable uh, named largest of type int. And because it doesn't have an assignment, when you use var like this, always only use var when you want to set something to its zero value. Otherwise, use the shorthand notation. And so since we're using var and there's no assignment, this is getting set to its zero value, which means largest is now set to zero, because the zero value for an int is zero. So we have largest set to zero, and then we're going to do a for range loop. And so range allows you to iterate over a list, a collection of something. And, uh, and, uh, and you, you, it has two returns, right? And the two returns are key and value. So for key, value, or you might say iter iterator, i, right? Like in other loops, you have the i. For i and then the current item. So you'll see this called different stuff. With a map, often it's key value. When it's like you want the iterator, the i, you'll see i often right here. And right here we're throwing away like I'm on iteration one of the loop, I'm on iteration two of the loop, I'm on iteration three of the loop, I'm on, right? We're just throwing away that value. We don't want it, but we do want the value. So when we run range, when we range over this number, these numbers, the value is going to be four and then seven and then nine. So every time through the loop, it's going to go to the new V will be assigned to the new value of what we're ranging over. And, uh, and then if V is greater than zero the first time, is four greater than zeros? Yeah, that's true. So let's set largest equal to four. Now four is our largest. And then we hit down here and we go back through and then it's seven greater than four. 
Yeah, that's true. So let's set largest equal to seven. And then go back here, and then now we're on nine is the value, the third one. Is nine greater than seven? Yeah, that's true. So let's set largest equal to nine. All right, and then come back up here. And so you can see how that works. And we keep hitting larger ones until we get to 23. I'm tired of talking about that, but hopefully you see how that's happening. And then we return largest, which is an int, and uh, we get greatest, and then we just print it. That's awesome. It's really pretty elegant, right, when you see, like, people, the logic or whatever. Uh, bad coding practice, variable shadowing, right? So this is something you would not want to do. And so here I have, uh, you know, a max, right? And then, uh, and then the scope of max is this function. This is at the package level, right? Because it's a type. And so the scope of that's at the package level. And then if, and, and that's why inside here I'm calling max, right? So it has access to that because this is uh, inside the package. And so it has access to everything at the package level. Here, uh, if I create another variable max inside of here, it'll let me do that, but that's called variable shadowing and that's bad practice. Because here I call max and it's referring to this, right, it's a function, and I call max again, it's referring to this, and I assign it to here and that gives me 543, and I print 543, but if I then went like this, let's call max again, well no, now max is just 543 and that makes no sense. All right, so that's variable shadowing. All right, so func expressions, setting a variable equal to a function, that's all that means. So an expression like, you know, x equals x colon equal 9, that's an expression. Or x colon equal func something, something, something would also be an expression. So that's called a func expression. So here we have, uh, this is not a function, func expression. This is our code before using a func expression. So just to see what you could do. And, uh, and so that's up on the left, not a func expression, and over here on the right is a func expression. And so I'm setting a variable equal to a function. That doesn't look all that different, right? When you run it, here I'm running greeting, and here I'm running greeting, and I'm running it the same way, right? But here it's greeting, and then colon equal, and then a func, right? So it's just kind of interesting, different notation. <clears throat> the difference here is that the scope of a uh, greeting is func main, right? So before my scope was at the package level, now my scope's only here. I would probably, for this, just leave it like this because you also want to have as little code as possible inside main. Extract a lot of stuff into functions. And if you look at the type of greeting, right? So here, func expression type of greeting, and the type is a func. Another func expression, setting a variable equal to a func. So this is the one we saw before. Another func expression, setting a variable equal to a func. So notice that we've thrown out the name, right? This is an anonymous function. It doesn't have a name. When I first heard about anonymous functions, I'm like, what the heck's an anonymous function? Well, it's just a function without a name. This function has no name, right? Normally, the name would be right here between func and then a space and then right next to the parens where you specify the parameters. That's an anonymous function. So that's func expressions. Not complicated, but okay, I understand that phrase and term. I know what that means. So then we have a closure. And you're going to hear about closure a lot. Like people talk about closure and it's like, oh, it's like a, a programming um, pattern, right? Design pattern. And you use closure to sort of limit scope or to, to access certain variables. So one thing in closing another is closure. So here we have func main, and it's enclosing a func increment, which is a func expression, right? And because of that, uh, func main has x 
uh, equals zero declared here, and increment this function has access to x without x having been passed in as a parameter, right? Because here's the scope of x. It's all of that. Whoops. Sorry, jumpy. The scope of x is this is all of func main, right? Which means that this has access to it. So func main is enclosing the increment function. The increment function has access to x through closure, right? Without having x ha have to be passed in as an argument. So you could also write that as func increment. Uh, That's a good question. Yeah, could we do a function right in a function like that, or does it have to be a func expression? And after func there, is that what it's returned? Is that the return? Or Which one right here? No, above, after func. Increment, we'll see, is equal to func. Yeah, returns an int. That's the return. So could you write func parentheses? So here's with closure, here's without closure, had to put x up here at the package level. For you know it to have access to it. And you're you're wondering if we could do I'm just rewriting that line, that's all. So it starts with fuck instead of starts with the name. Let's just do that. Close all. Um, funk increment int. Right? Yeah. That's kind of what you're thinking. Yeah, just seems like it's shorter. Doesn't really like that, huh? No. I don't think you could do that. Oh. Doesn't like fun functions within functions. It likes that, but now it's saying x is never used. <laughs> so you have to define it as a variable of type func. Is that what you're you doing? have to do a func expression. Func expression. Yeah. That. Yeah, I think that's a very good response. Hmm. <laughs> okay, you know, that's the way you do it. Okay. At some point, maybe it'll make more sense. I'm sure there's a good logical reason behind all that. So, not using closure, we saw that just a moment ago, right? Where we pulled increment out of main. And uh, not using side by side, not using closure, closure. And uh, that's closure. That's all I had to say about that. You guys need some hands-on? It's probably time, right? Let's see, where's our next exercise? Ooh, no exercises for a while. Here's an exercise. Okay, let's do this one. Write a program that calls a function which takes first name and age and then returns a string like this. John is 27 years old. 